welcome back and now ready for your final assignment. Um, you can redo everything we just did right here for your final assignment and then just add more buildings and add more details or you can start over. Um, well, you should start over, but start something new. Uh, what happens if you put the horizon line up high and make a building? You have your horizon line up higher and then you add a uh, vertical line for your building to start. And again, the top and bottom of that vertical line can connect to the vanishing point. You can create guidelines if you want for the bottom of it, um, like I have here, and guidelines for the top. I'm just gonna do this quickly here and create a scene. If you have it below the horizon line, you're gonna be able to see the tops of your buildings. Um, and it's gonna be more like a bird looking down. Remember that bird is flying in the sky and anything below the horizon line is the bird's eye view. Um, so then you can draw your buildings from here and have them like that. Don't forget if we're gonna make a top of a building or top of a, a square a rectangle, we crisscross back here, uh, wherever they meet in the middle is the back of the building. So here would be like your corner building. And then you can add your other buildings again by drawing vertical lines and connecting it to each vanishing point. This one will have an alleyway in between. I can go like that, making sure I line up my ruler, vertical line down. This part's already connected to VP2. So I'm just gonna make it a solid line for the bottom of my building right there. Solid line for the top. And show the rest of this building. So here is a way to create the start of a scene. You can do this on both sides. Um, and what you have then is, right here is an alleyway. You could extend that alleyway to wrap behind the building. So it goes from here to the bottom of this building stops, jumps, go behind the center building. Maybe it stops here. And um, let me make the bottom of that road, which would start here. I'm gonna jump behind the building. Again, this is lined up to VP1. If I go something like that, then I can make this road go back to VP2. And now we have like some city streets that we can see. I'm gonna jump here, going back. This is gonna extend back here. Remember, as things get further away from us, they get smaller. And now we have a road that turns like that. We can add other side streets. We can extend this out further and really create like kind of a neat scene that you're looking down on um, as a bird. So this is if you make the horizon line a little bit higher, you're gonna start to see this angle of the building. So for, feel free to change that up. Um, what happens if you make the horizon line low like this? Um, this would be great if you want floating buildings or a floating um, cityscape or something flying in the sky. Your horizon line could be up here. You could make a floating building up here, starting with the vertical line, connecting it to each vanishing point, and making it and starting your um, design from up here. And maybe you have a whole sky of buildings that are floating. This is connecting to VP2. Again, this will be like a worm's eye view. You're a small worm looking up at the sky, seeing the bottoms of the buildings, vertical line here. If I don't quite connect, I would erase um, there. Again, to see the bottom of the building, you crisscross those two points. And wherever they crisscross, going to opposite vanishing points, is the back of the building. So here is a view of what it would look like with a low horizon line. Of course, you could have things floating up here. Uh, which would be kind of cool to have doors and windows. Or you could have super large buildings um, that feel really tall. If I cross that center line over the horizon line and then I touch it to the both vanishing points, this would be my sidewalk down here. And I'm starting it the same way we started our practice one. Um, but then I'm gonna make really tall feeling buildings because that horizon line is so low. That, one, that line went to VP1, vertical down. This line is going to VP2, maybe behind the floating building, and then down. And then I have a really tall building that we're looking up and we've got really small road down here um, with people and now we're starting to make it feel like we're looking up at a really large city. 
Um, so you could experiment with that too on a fresh piece of paper. Again, this is horizon line in the middle. And then we have horizon line high and horizon line low. Um, and then what happens if you want to create something and really challenge yourself? Um, a building that would be normal or your house. You could take a picture of something and right here I have a picture on an iPad. I hope you can kind of see that. Um, whatever you take a picture of, if you have something that looks like it's um, in the middle, uh, a, a angled view, here would be your her vertical line. And then the horizon line would be down here. You follow your finger. You follow the, all these lines. They all follow to each vanishing point. And this is a real picture um, that goes to each vanishing point, and you can replicate that on a piece of paper. Um, I have another picture here um, of a building that you can see. I just grabbed a book and found a random building. Find the middle line. Here's the middle vertical line. And the tops of all these windows on the left will go off to an imaginary vanishing point way over here. And on the, all the ones on the right will go to an imaginary vanishing point over here. And this, again, is in two-point perspective. Um, just happen to have this picture laying around. Some of you might recognize this place. This gets a little bit more complicated. So if you find a picture like this you want to replicate, first of all, this is a straight-on view. Um, and you'd have to try to figure out where you could find the two-point perspective. So we'd see a horizon line down here. And the reason I know the horizon line is down here is because I look at some of my straight lines. And those straight lines, for example, this tower right here, go from to VP2, and this angle goes to VP1. Now they're going to be off the page, but where they touch is going to be the horizon line. So if I were to imaginary put a vertical line in the middle like this, we kind of have this curving off to those vanishing points with the horizon line going through this building. Now this has a lot of curves, a lot of different angles to it. This is a highly challenging building. If you want to take it on, go for it. Um, see what you can do. Let me know. Email me. If you get stuck, we can figure out something like that. But if you want to find a building to replicate, go for it. But I would look for a corner angled view of it to help you discern where the uh, vanishing points are um, left and right. I have one more example here of a Lego book. Um, again, here's a picture of a building. Right in the middle here is that vertical line. And if I would take my ruler, both the top and bottom, go over to a vanishing point somewhere off the page over here um, with the horizon line that would go through. All the tops of these windows and bottoms go to VP2. All the tops and bottoms go to VP1. Same with this one over here. Vertical line down. All the stories go to opposite vanishing points. So you can find a building like that to replicate, maybe your own house, or you can make up one on your own. So um, go ahead and try it. Here's your instructions, which you're going to be graded on. You're going to have to have more than eight buildings in your picture. Now I'm going to put buildings in quotes because maybe you want to draw little huts or maybe you want to draw helicopters or maybe you want to draw structures. If you have them drawn in there or trucks, um, I could count that maybe as a structure or a building. So I want at least eight of something. Like this could be um, a, a airplane. So you're going to have to have at least eight of those. Um, I want you to come up with a theme for your um, cityscape. So maybe you have it all colored in black and white and red. Maybe you have it brewers themed. Maybe you have it sports themed. Maybe all your buildings relate to toys, um, different types of shoes. I just don't want a plain old cityscape. I want you to think of colors that can tie it together to have unity um, or some sort of theme that would be interesting to you. Um, sports world, every building is a different sport. I don't care. Um, you can also, you also are gonna need somewhat of a sidewalk or a curb. And I'm gonna put these in quotes as well because if you're underwater, um, where's that one? Maybe this one would be underwater. Um, and instead of straight lines for a path, you make them like a, a sandy cobblestone seashell path underneath here, something that shows there's pathways, um, sidewalks and curbs that go in between your buildings. Um, and then I'm gonna have you have a lot of details. 
I want to see a lot of details. Now you can look on Art Sonia at last year's and last trimester's pictures of the two point perspective to see what kind of details you can make. Um, Google two point linear perspective and look at drawings from other people to get ideas. Uh, get as creative as possible, but remember, all lines are vertical or to a vanishing point. All lines are vertical or to a vanishing point. If you start to cheat and start to make peaked rooftops or curved uh, windows, you run the risk of not following the rules. And I'm not saying that it's never going to happen, but if you're confused, try it this way first. I'm available for you to talk to if you need me, um, and we can go from there. So. Those are just some ideas that you can do. And again, go back to this one. Go back to the videos and just start from the very beginning. If you wanna just make this one, this will get you an A. That'll be great. Um, and then add your own details and your own touches to it with your own theme. Color it in with your own theme. Maybe you do every other building a, a different color and, and have some fun. Um, but that's kind of the gist and some options. Feel free to challenge yourself as much as you wanna challenge yourself and go from there. So. If you have questions, let me know, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.